All right, welcome into another day of our daily devos in the Psalms. Pastor Rick here, ready to jump into another chapter in the Psalms so we can just uh, see what the Lord has to say to us today. So I want to point your attention to Psalm 35. And uh, again, it's the Psalm of David. So he's uh, he's just a writing machine, you know, writing these songs to the Lord. And this one is titled A Prayer for Victory. So we're just going to jump in here. Oppose my opponents, Lord. Fight those who fight me. Take your shields, large and small, and come to my aid. Draw the spear and the javelin against my pursuers and assure me I am your deliverance. Uh, it's here, you know, you can see David believes that God is my deliverance, but he's saying, Lord, um, assure me, you know, show up. And I think that this is such a healthy thing for us to see that even David had these moments where much like the guy that came up to Jesus and said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And I'm comforted today by the fact that the Lord let verses like this be in the Bible. Assure me that you're my, that you're my deliverance. Assure me, Lord, because Sometimes I get a little, I get a little overwhelmed by what's coming against me. And, and sometimes I don't know what you're doing. I know you're my deliverance, but I mean, I need you to give me some assurance. Like I'm, I'm faltering a little. I need your help here, God. Uh, let those who intend to take my life be disgraced and humiliated. Let those who plan to harm me be turned back and ashamed. Let them be like Let's see here. Let them be like chaff in the wind with the angel of the Lord driving them away. I mean, the angel of the Lord, remember, it's a, it's a powerful picture of God's authority over your enemies. And uh, I love how he's just saying, let the angel of the Lord drive them away. Let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. Yeah, let them fall into the trap that they set for me, basically, right? And so let their way be dark and slippery with the angel of the Lord pursuing them. They hid their net for me without cause. They dug a pit for me without cause. Let ruin come on him unexpectedly and let the net that he hid ensnare him. Let him fall into it to his ruin. Again, this is a really common approach of writing in their day was, you know, hey, that trap they set for me, you let that rock they set to fall on me, let it roll back on them. Like, let them be victimized basically by their own evil desires. And so basically just kind of give them, give them what they've got coming, Lord, you know, don't, don't let it succeed against me, but not just don't let it succeed against me, but Lord, let them pay a price for them wanting to destroy me. Then I will rejoice in the Lord. I will delight in his deliverance. And just think again, this is such a good way for, us to live our lives, that I will rejoice in the Lord and I will delight in his deliverance. Like, let's not take it for granted. Let's remind ourselves, let's shape our perspective to see those dynamics so that we are there, like we're able to take inventory of it and say, you know what, Lord, you did, re you did deliver me. You did uh, rescue me, Lord. And so I'm going to rejoice in you and I'm going to delight in the fact that you are my deliverance. All my bones will say, Lord, who is like you, rescuing the poor from one too strong for him, the poor or the needy from one who robs him. Malicious witnesses come forward. They question me about things I do not know. They repay me evil for good, which is the opposite of what we're supposed to do, right? So do not repay evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. They repay me evil for good, making me desolate. Yet when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer was genuine. Yet when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. So there's this thing in here about not celebrating over the demise of your enemy, even though, even though you can make a pretty good case that they deserve it. Um, yet when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth, in indicating grief. You know, that I'm, I'm mourning the fact that you're sick. And, and then I humbled myself with fasting and my prayer was genuine. Wow. Like that's a, that's a tall bar to like of expectation to meet right there. 
but definitely one that we need to focus on that our prayers would be genuine for those that have set themselves up against us and that we don't celebrate in the demise of the wicked because that's not where we're supposed to be. I went about mourning as if for my friend or brother, I was bowed down with grief, like one mourning for a mother. But uh, when I stumbled, they gathered in glee. They gathered against me. Assailants I did not know tore at me and did not stop. With godless mockery, they gnashed their teeth at me. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue me from their ravages. Rescue my precious life from the young lions. I will praise you in the great assembly. I will exalt you among many people. Do not let my deceitful enemies rejoice over me. Do not let those who hate me without cause wink at me maliciously. For they do not speak in friendly ways, but contrive fraudulent schemes against those who live peaceably in the land. They open their mouths wide against me and say, Aha, we saw it. You saw it, Lord. Do not be silent, Lord. Do not be far from me. I love just this honesty. Like, Lord, you feel, you're feeling kind of far away. Don't be far away from me. Don't be silent. I need to hear you. I need to be near you. Because even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. I don't want you to be far from me. Wake up. And rise to my defense, to my cause. Now, does that mean God sleeps? No. Poetic language to describe how he feels. He feels as though God is being silent. He feels as though God has gone to take a little nap, a little nappy poo. So so when he says, do not be silent, Lord, uh, do not be far from me. Wake up and rise to my defense. He's not saying, I think you're sleeping. He's just saying, man, it seems, it feels like. It feels like you might be sleeping because I just don't know what you're up to. Uh, Vindicate me, Lord my God, in keeping with your righteousness, and do not let them rejoice over me. Do not let them say in their hearts, aha, just what we wanted. Do not let them say, we have swallowed him up. Let those who rejoice at my misfortune be disgraced and humiliated. Let those who exalt themselves over me be clothed with shame and reproach. Let those who want my vindication shout for joy and be glad. Let them continually say, the Lord be exalted. He takes pleasure in his servant's well-being. The Lord be exalted. He takes pleasure in his servant's well-being. And my tongue will proclaim your righteousness, your praise all day long. So good. Such a great way to wrap it all up, right? Like he's been struggling. He's been honest. You seem far away. You seem silent. Lord, be exalted because I know that you take pleasure in your servant's well-being. Even though my circumstances are telling me a couple of other things right now and I'm a little discouraged, Lord, your name be exalted because you take pleasure in your servant's well-being. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness and your praise all the day long. That's the kind of attitude we need to get to. It doesn't mean that we can't have the journey as is clear by this this prayer of victory is filled in with some stuff that doesn't feel very victorious, you know, and so we want to make sure that we have realistic um, approach in our relationship with God, that we're not acting, that we're not lying about it, but that also we stir ourselves towards faith in him. Lord, be exalted. You take pleasure in your servant's well-being. So I can trust you. I can believe in you. And I know that you're not afar off. I know that you're not sleeping. I know that you are here and that you are acting and that you are doing and you are a just God. So let those who rejoice at my misfortune be disgraced and humiliated because you're a just God. And because you're a just God and I want to be like you, I know that I don't want to celebrate when my enemies are down. So I'm going to put on sackcloth and ashes and I'm going to humble myself in fasting. So I just think it's such a great um, like catalog there of how we should behave, how we should treat other people, even when they're treating us like garbage. So with that, I hope you're encouraged today. Hope you're strengthened. God bless you. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.